live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening everyone. First tonight, an urgent review into child safety at the Launceston General Hospital has been welcomed by victim survivors. It follows weeks of disturbing evidence given at the Commission of Inquiry. But pressure is mounting on the state government to extend its investigation far beyond the health system. Kirsty Neely formed a close friendship with nurse James Griffin when she stayed in Ward 4K. But looking back, his behaviour was far from normal. Like there was a lot of red flags that people could have picked up on that wasn't... Allegations of Griffin's sexual abuse towards children has been canvassed throughout the Commission of Inquiry. The story so harrowing the state government is conducting an immediate review into child safety at the Launceston General. Uh, we are determined to bring these matters out of the shadows and then to take action so we can stamp out pedophilia, abuse and neglect in our state. Victim survivors can take part with recommendations to be handed down in November, six months before commissioners give their findings. One union says that approach could do more harm than good. It's just hope that the government's making the right decisions now because the Commission of Inquiry could in fact undo some of the decisions that have already been made. It's not just the LGH where horrific stories have surfaced. The inquiry has heard allegations of abuse across education, youth detention and out-of-home care, with some calling for reviews into those institutions. We don't want to wait to hear the same sort of horrifying evidence come out about other facilities. They need to take steps now to ensure that those children in the care of the government are as safe as they can be. The state government says it's up to the Commission of Inquiry to use its powers to uncover the truth. Ainsley Kosh, 7 Tasmania News. Four youths are in custody following three separate theft incidents across Hobart this afternoon. The group is accused of stealing money from the Newtown Pizza Hut around a quarter to one. They're also allegedly linked with other thefts at a Woolworths and a retail store in the CBD earlier in the day. No one was physically injured during the incident. The group was located in Lutana a short time later. Flu vaccines will be made free for July to keep Tasmanians safe from a winter bug. The state government is extending a program to deliver free jabs through GPs, pharmacies and public clinics. 250,000 people have already received a vaccine, but the health department is noting high flu cases this year. Disruptions to flights in and out of Tasmania have seen passengers delayed by hours or even days. Thick fog in the north and wild weather interstate is responsible for the chaos as winter bites. Thick fog blanketed the northern Midlands this morning, causing chaos at Launceston Airport. Apparently air control was saying, you know, probably not safe to land. So it's sort of getting delayed further and further, but it's all right. Three flights in and out delayed by as long as three hours. We uh, read some books, had some McDonald's in the food court, Lost a jacket, uh, but we're here. Well, they had their breakfast <laughs> instead of on the plane. Weary passengers beginning to board by mid-morning as the fog lifted and flights resumed. The depths of the Tasmanian winter has unleashed havoc on aviation schedules over the past week. We've seen um, some preemptive cancellations, particularly from Qantas Group, and um, that, that comes down to some technical issues with aircraft, but fog forecasts as well. Hobart couldn't escape the crunch either. Two flights to Sydney cancelled today, thanks to their stormy weather. Melbourne and Sydney are the real generators of flights and a lot of touch point for aircraft when they go through. Um, so whenever there is uh, a level of disruption in those two ports in particular, it does usually flow into regional ports as well. One Saturday afternoon flight from Melbourne made it all the way to Launceston, only to be turned around thanks to fog. A late cancellation on Thursday even saw seven passengers stay the night at Launceston Airport. The facility forced to stay open with accommodation in the area fully booked out. With the coldest of mornings behind us for now, there's hopes of a smoother flight ahead. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. Hundreds of Tasmanians have come together to continue celebrating NAIDOC week. Flag raising ceremonies were held across Hobart, Burnie and Launceston to mark the beginning of the state's daily cultural events.
The national theme, Get Up, Stand Up, Show Up, is about honouring the contributions of many Aboriginal people who have had to fight for 220 years for the rights of Aboriginal people. It is important uh, to acknowledge uh, Tasmania's uh, dark history, uh, to embark on truth-telling, uh, which will lead us along uh, the pathway uh, to treaty. Attendees are hoping the Premier's attendance speaks to his future Hopefully movements. this means he's going to progress um, treaty conversations in a more legitimate um, way as two sovereigns meeting rather than top down. Maybe he's going to support um, invasion day, date change like he said. The Hobart celebration also saw Cynthia Mansell appointed Aborigine of the Year, her uncle accepting the award on her behalf. The state government is extending its buy local policy for another two years to help create jobs and stimulate the economy. The initiative aims to increase opportunities for local suppliers to compete for government business. It helps our businesses have confidence to know that they can grow their business right here and to get these contracts in place with government is a boon to them and their, their P&Ls. It's very important. You can only hope that from a Tasmanian economy point of view that all businesses in Tasmania support Tasmanian businesses which flow out to the community and the consumers support Tasmanian product as well. The local benefits test will remain at 25% with the policy to be extended until July 2024. An annual competition is sparking friendly rivalry amongst Tasmania's first responders, all for the greater good. The Emergency Services Blood Challenge comes as donor booking cancellations hit their highest since April. Doing their part to help Tasmania's community both on and off the clock, these first-hand responders are rolling up their uniform sleeves to give blood. Every uh, time we donate blood we can uh, save up to three lives. And, you know, unfortunately, as emergency service workers, we go to uh, trauma events or road crashes where that blood is needed. Working as a team when tragedy strikes, today they're switching things up, striving against one another in the annual emergency services blood challenge. The police are actually leading at the moment, but again, it's a bit of friendly rivalry to see who can donate the, uh, the most blood. All our firefighters will get out there, donate a tonne of blood and uh, I'm very confident we'll be in the lead at the end of the challenge. SES Acting Director Leon Smith sitting in the chair a little longer to give plasma. It sounds funny but I feel quite refreshed after this. It's like a, probably like an oil change in an engine. I think you can, uh, you know, you can take something out and, um, and your body creates new new product, you know, internally. The regular donor says his motivation stems from seeing what the generosity of others can do for those battling hardship. My dad, just through his uh, treatment, had to have blood transfusions and I saw that instantaneous help that it provided him, you know. Um, you know, he'd walk in qu uh, quite depleted and, uh, and walk out feeling invigorated. The challenge comes as the triple threat of COVID, the flu and common cold sees cancellations at their highest since April, with one in two bookings falling through. At the moment we're needing to boost stocks of O negative blood. It's the universal type and is often used in emergencies and accidents. And with 33,000 donations needed across the country each week, these head honchos are pleading the public to spend just one hour of their time giving blood. Brianna Boylan, 7. Tasmania News. The RACT is helping drive Tasmania's switch to electric vehicles as Australian Motoring Services takes complete ownership of ChargeFox, the country's largest electric vehicle charging network. Officials are hoping to make the state electric vehicle ready to encourage more car companies to sell to Tasmania. People want to, want to buy an electric vehicle not just because they're going to be saving money long term on the running costs but they believe they're making a positive contribution to the environment. Only 1,000 electric vehicles are currently on Tasmanian roads compared to more than 600,000 registered cars. Some of the state's brightest young minds will take to the world stage next week to compete in the F1 in schools final. Riverside High students will showcase their miniature Formula One car following a year of designing, testing and manufacturing. On track for world domination, five Riverside High students are revved up and ready to go for the upcoming F1 in schools world final. I'm really proud of how we've done and I think we've come a long way and progressed a lot since the start of this competition. It is very stressful but the end result and all the experiences we get from it is very rewarding. 
57 teams from across 26 countries will race to the finish line, including these Year 9 and 10 students known as In Motion. As in constantly being in motion, constantly seeking improvement. And that's also guided by our, our mission statement, which is to encourage thousands of young girls to take on new challenges. While their logo encompasses five petals, representing each member and their unique skill set, uniting to form a wheel in motion. The team will be virtually judged with this year's event held in the United Kingdom. This is the car that um, we work to develop for the world competition. Um, it's the culmination of all our research and experience over the four years we've been competing. We wanted to focus on creating smooth flow lines and getting the most aerodynamic design possible. Travelling 20 metres in as little as a second, the car is propelled by a CO2 gas canister. The Tassie team is proud of their achievements. An all-girls team in a male-based area, it's really privileged, I guess, to be an all-girls team and competing in a world competition to compete against other teams is pretty amazing. With support from their school community, loud and clear. They've spent an amazing um, amount of time co collaborating and working together to, to get this result. So while the pros race today, the scaled down Silverstone begins next week. McKenna Bailey, 7 Tasmania News. Vino lovers will be seeing double in August with a second edition of the Tasmanian Wine Festival confirmed for Hobart. The winter edition will focus on all things red, with experts saying a changing climate is enhancing its potential. There's nothing like a warm glass of red to help ward off the chill. It's the best time to drink a red wine in winter. Tasmania has so many great cool climate wines and we're clearly an industry leader in what we do down in Tasmania. The Tasmanian Wine Festival has fast become one of Hobart's iconic summer events. Organisers now expanding into winter, with a second edition coming to the city in August, celebrating all things red. We're very lucky that uh, we can produce such fantastic wines. So being able to market that to interstate really does showcase the industry as a whole. The new edition, which will be held here at the Good Shed, is also a sign of growth. Experts say with the climate changing, winemakers are now able to grow those varieties previously deemed impossible, a development which is gaining attention interstate. We're seeing a lot of investment from larger mainland uh, companies buy Tasmanian vineyards and plant varieties that historically we didn't had the confidence to grow. A little bit heavier, you know, got a little bit of that pepper, that, you know, Shiraz, um, you know, heaviness to them. More than 20 vineyards will showcase around 100 varieties, tempered by music, local food and masterclasses on how to enjoy your drop. And being able to learn all of those additional details that you might not get otherwise really does add to the extra experience of consuming fantastic wine. The event takes place over the weekend of August 20 and 21. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. The East Coast nightlife is becoming a blaze of glory as Bishano Beams reports a bump in numbers. Around a thousand people were starstruck by the laser light show on opening weekend, filling the coffers of the coastal town. And so were plenty of others under a southern crisscross of laser lights, the dazzling display wowing a wide-eyed and awestruck audience. Really cool. The lights were on the beat and it hit the beat a lot. It has just been a wonderful experience to see everybody so happy and pleased and thrilled with the light show. Bish and O'Beams captivated around a thousand people on opening weekend, doubling last year's attendance. Arthur Ipsaros is the brain behind the beams, controlling six lasers lined up to a music backing. He shed some light on why this location works so well. It's a great spot because it's really dark here, so it makes the lasers pop. The whole town's been a buzz. Last night when the beams finished, everybody poured into the village. There wasn't a seat in any restaurant. It was wonderful. Making the event an economic beacon, and it isn't too late to become starry-eyed yourself. The show is on every night in July from 6pm. There is something special about laser in the way it interacts with particles in the air and... And, and how far it travels. Did you have fun? 
<laughs> <laughs> the trip east proving to be a light bulb moment. Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. In the TSL, Lauderdale believes it's now sitting in a good position to have a major crack at the finals. The Southern Bombers stunned North Launceston at Utah Stadium on Saturday, a venue they've had little success at in recent years. After losing their first three matches, they now sit third on the table, a game clear of fourth position. One of their stars says a sprinkling of baby bombers has revitalised their season. What a great moment for the young man. I think just them guys being more consistent and just playing more well-rounded games for four quarters has really helped us as, as a team. The Southern Bombers have the bye this week. And that brings us to the latest votes in the Crips TSL Player of the Year after 14 rounds. Jake Hines was an easy pick for best on ground after bagging 10 goals in Launceston's 229-point obliteration of Glenorchy. Sam Sickens is breaking away in the vote counting, adding three more in Lauderdale's crucial win in the north. And plenty of love for Kieran Lovell as the Tigers continue their march towards the finals. Taking a look at the leaderboard now, Siggins is four votes clear of Joby Harper. Kingston pair Eddie Cole and Kieran Lovell remain in the race. Colin Garland and Brody Powerman are now outside chances. AFLW returns to the state in late August when the Kangaroos host the Gold Coast Suns. The Saturday afternoon game is slated for August 27 at Blunston Arena. While well, Utah Stadium will host a twilight game between the Roos and Geelong at 5.10 on September 16. Hawthorne, Sydney, Port Adelaide and Essendon are entering this year's competition, bringing it to 18 clubs. Tasmania's under-16s were hot under the collar in the national championship. The scuffle against the Brisbane Lions quickly dispersed when Lauderdale's Riley Banks flew high in the final term. He went on to kick his third goal of the game to cap off a 19-point win at Metricon Stadium. Tasmania finishes its series against Sydney at Twin Ovals. That's on this Sunday. Alex Peroni and his Algarve team have survived a late fuel scare to claim a podium finish in the European Le Mans series. His number 47 car finished third in its class at the four hours of Monza and ninth overall, but came to a stop on its way back to the pits after running out of fuel. Peroni's next race is at Barcelona at the end of August. Silver for Tasmania's Henry Yule in one of rowing's historic races. Yule was part of the Australian men's Cox State competing in the Grand Challenge Cup, the oldest trophy race at the Henley Royal Regatta, which dates back to 1839. The crew finished second to the local Oxford Brooks crew. And Tasmania's young basketballers are still on a winning streak. The Aussie Crocs trio of Lachlan Brewer, Jacob Furphy and Kai Savage opened their under-17 World Cup campaign with back-to-back -back wins. They beat Poland by 17 points and eclipsed Egypt by 45. So still good news there on the basketball front, Kim. Good evening. Hobart and Burnie, 15 degrees today. Launceston, 11 and Devonport, 13. 15 was the high. That was scored by a number of centres around the state, while the low was minus 4 at Launceston Airport. Strawn reached 14 degrees. Flinders Island and Grove, 13. Lowhead, 11. Low cloud brought a shower or two over the west and far south. Lake Margaret, just 4 millimetres to 3pm, so not much in that. A thick band of cloud is over Queensland and New South Wales as lower level cloud was brought on shore over Victoria. A large high sits over our region tomorrow, holding back the progress of the next cold front. We'll have southwest to southeasterly winds at 5 to 15 knots, reaching 20 knots over southern waters, swells to 4 metres there. Forecast for tomorrow, Tuesday in Hobart and partly cloudy 15, 13 for Adventure Bay, a possible shower, a shower in the morning for Taralea, 11 the high. Launceston, a top of 14 after another very cold start, minus 3 to kick the day off. 1 for Devonport overnight, but a sunny 14 later, 13 the high for Bridport. Burnie expecting a top of 13 degrees, 2 overnight, a sunny day, a few showers for Strawn, 13, 13 also for Marrowar. St Helens, a high of 14 degrees and partly cloudy. Swansea, 15, a top of 14 at Whitemark. To the next few days, and we look towards Wednesday, a few showers again over the north and northeast of the state, but fine over the south and southeast. Moving on to Thursday, and we'll have another showery day right across Tasmania with winds shifting southwest to southerly, and on Friday, more precipitation mainly over the east and southeast of the state. 17 in Perth tomorrow with a shower, a sunny but cool day in Adelaide, 15 as well, the forecast for Melbourne. The rain continues for Sydney and showery as well in Brisbane. And as Monday night cools down, it's 11 degrees, mostly cloudy in Hobart, and by the looks of those numbers, Kim, it's also 11 in the north.
<laughs> lucky mess. Thanks, Murph. Well, finally tonight, the freezing starts have had some of us struggling to get out of bed, but not this next man who saw this morning's frost in Launceston as the perfect opportunity to work on a frost angel. Waverley's Jake Davis took to the icy ground while his neighbour filmed the cool creation. How's that one turned out? Oh, look at that! <laughs> his efforts earning him an appropriate nickname, Jake Frost. Do it all again tomorrow. And that is all your news for now. We'll be back later with updates. Thanks for your company. Good night.